Hey everyone, in this video we'll cover structs in BigQuery and then see how we can use structs to define really cool JavaScript UDFs. Yeah, you can use JavaScript in your SQL and we'll show you how in this video. First, what is a struct in BigQuery? So a struct is a container of ordered fields, each with a type that's required and a field name that's optional. So let's take a look at this example. We have select Alice as name and then a struct as a profile. So with this example, you'll create a two column table. The first column is just a string name, what you're used to as before. Now the second column will have a bundle of information this time. Uh, the first field of the struct is an int age, second is a string or an occupation, but notice how at the end of the day, this whole thing is still a single row in your table. So why do we use structs? Why not just have more columns, a column for age and a column for occupation? Well, the first big advantage is you can use structs in arrays. So each array can store multiple pieces of information per element if you use structs. The other is you can combine related data together. So these two fields conveniently uh, can be grouped under a profile. So how do I create a struct? There are three approaches. The simplest approach is to just use tuple syntax. You can wrap multiple expressions and parentheses to achieve a struct. So if I say select one, two, foo as x, all I need to do is wrap them around parentheses and now I get a single struct. The second approach is to use the struct keyword. And this is typeless because you don't declare the type up front. BigQuery will infer that for you. So if you say select struct of one, two, foo, you'll get the same thing as with the tuple syntax. The difference is that you can give these fields names as well in the typeless struct syntax. So you say select struct your value as name, 35 as age, and now you have a struct that has field names. And we'll see why that is useful in a moment. The third approach is to use the type struct syntax. Here, you would declare your type up front with angle brackets. So um, within each angle bracket, you provide the field name, which is optional, and the type, which is required. So typically your types will look like this. Now, names are optional, you can choose to omit them. And then the other thing to note is types can be nested structs. So within this overall struct, I have a profile substruct with an age and an occupation. And you'll use these type declarations in gold later when defining UDFs. But for the purposes of creating a struct, you put the type in front of the parentheses um, to form your struct. And so these two do the same thing, one where we declare the type up front, one where we just um, have BigQuery infer the type. So there are some additional rules for structs. First, struct type fields can be null. So if you look at this first example here, one of the rows has a struct. The other just has a null value. Now fields within the struct can also be null. So within this Alice35 struct, you can put null for the age instead of 35. That works well too. The second rule is structs can be compared using equal, not equal, in, and not in. So in this example, we're comparing the profile with two struct values. And then the third rule is structs cannot be used as the field in group by. So this is just a BigQuery limitation. You cannot group by a column with a struct type. Here are my personal tips for using structs. The first is just to avoid tuple syntax. I know it's simpler, but if you just type struct, your code becomes so much clearer because you just tell the reader, hey, I'm producing a struct here. The second tip I have is to avoid anonymous struct fields because you can't reference the struct fields easily if you don't have the names. But if you do, you can simply use dot notation. So for the first example struct of one, two, how am I supposed to extract the first and second value? Surprisingly, BigQuery doesn't have a built-in keyword for that, but you can use dot notation if your struct has names. Now let's discuss select as struct. You use select as struct to convert a multi-column subquery into a struct where a single value is typically expected. So the first example is a subquery with an array. 
Typically, array expects your subquery to be a single column, but if you say select as struct, you can now define your subquery using multiple columns. And then at the end, select as struct will convert that multi-column output into a single struct. The second place you can use this is a subquery in where. So when you have where profile equals something, this something is typically one value. But if you say select as struct, you can express that one value in terms of multiple columns. So that's where select as struct is useful. Next, let's talk about unnest in structs. So when you unnest an array of structs, each struct field becomes a column. So let's take a look at this example. Folders is a table with two rows. Uh, the first folder row has uh, two files. The second has one. If we unnest them, which is what this comma does, then we now have one row for each element and each row still has a pointer to the original list, but now every field of the struct is its own column in this unnested table. Switching gears now, let's talk about JavaScript and SQL. So JavaScript itself is a widely used programming language. You would typically see it in web development, and it's a more expressive language than SQL, which is declarative. Here's some basic syntax that you need to know about JavaScript to get going in SQL. Very first thing is you can keep track of variables, um, which is information by name. So var foo, foo is the name that will point to the information to. Functions, uh, you can define a block of code to use later by name. For objects, these correspond to SQL structs. If you need to return a SQL struct in JavaScript, you would construct an object like this. If you receive SQL struct as input, you would look up the field of a struct uh, using square brackets. And then finally, the key feature of JavaScript that you won't get in SQL is loops. You can execute multiple times using a for loop or a for each loop. In BigQuery, user-defined functions or UDFs are functions that take in SQL input and return SQL output. Now, Within this function, you can write SQL or JavaScript code. And we're going to look at how JavaScript code is used here. So the syntax is create temp function with your function name and your parameters and your return type. Then you say language.js. And once you have the quotes here, you can insert your JavaScript code within um, to implement your function. And so here's a very simple example from BigQuery docs, create temp function multiply inputs. Note that these types are all SQL types, and your JavaScript code will be within the quotes here. Now, as a performance note, JavaScript functions should be used after you've done all the possible filtering you can using WHERE clauses. Typically, these UDFs are run on separate servers, and so there's overhead associated with uh, passing data into and out of the UDF. So as a pro tip, JavaScript UDFs can take in and return complex data structures, arrays, structs, and so forth. So we have some examples here. First one is create profile, which returns a struct. You can see that you can call create profile anytime to get that struct. A more complicated example is here in improvements. So let's suppose you're given a list of test grades, where each grade is the name of the test and the score and you want to return all the names where the student has seen an improvement. And so how do we define this function? We need to keep track of the previous score to compare against the current score to see if there is an improvement. We need to define a variable to keep track of the improvements we've seen so far. Then we're going to loop over the input array. You can use a for each loop for this purpose. I'm going to access the data in the struct using square brackets. So if this grade score is greater than the previous score, then yeah, I'm going to consider that an improvement, and I'm going to push the name of the test to that list I'm tracking. Either way, I'm going to update the previous score to move on to the next comparison. And so with that, uh, for an input like this one, test 180, test 282, test 370, and test 495, 
we see that the improvements will be 80, 82 is greater than 80, and 95 is greater than 70. And so you'll get three elements in the array as the output for this example. Let's take our knowledge to the Austin bike share example. In my previous video on BigQuery arrays, we defined a trips per bike table where each row is a bike in the Austin bike share system and each row has a list of trips that the bike has ever taken. The start station, the end station, the start time, and the duration. Well, one question we have is which bikes in the system have gone from UT Austin to City Hall to the convention center in its career, so to speak? And so we can define a JavaScript function to answer this complicated question. Let's call this function has visited in order, and we need two pieces of information. One is the stations that the bike has ever visited and the path that we're interested in. And so what we'll want to do is keep track of a path index that lets us know how far along the path we have gone through. We're going to iterate through the list of start stations for the bike. And then if the path at the particular index we're on matches the start station, then we found a match, we're going to increment that index. So now we're looking for the next station in the path. And once we've hit all the stations in the path, we're going to return true. Now, if the path does not match the start station, then we're going to reset our progress. Uh, you may also want to implement a flavor of this function where you don't reset the progress if there's not a match, but we're looking for exact matches in this function. So if we can't find any matches uh, after going through the whole list, we're going to return false. And now we can call this Boolean function in our SQL script. We say select bike ID from this trips per bike data set where uh, this path, uh, UT Austin to City Hall to Convention Center, has been visited in order. We have to massage the input a little bit. Uh, the trips per bike data set has an array of a struct. We just want the start station. So we're going to unnest that trip and only extract the start station. That will be our input. And yeah, we find out that exactly two bikes out of the 800 or so in the system have done this exact trip. Pretty neat. <laughs> and so you can see how JavaScript can really help elevate your SQL game if you take advantage of structs and loops. I'll see you in the next video.